Theo Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Network Detective Stories, continuing America's love affair with private eyes. We now go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our feature presentation. We present Galbraith and the Midas Touch by Robert Barr with Bernard Hepton, Richard Davis and Garrard Green. Episode one, in which a picture is developed, is entitled, Watch the Birdie. British Airways announced the arrival of flight BE783 from Oslo. Passengers are now passing through customs. Passport, please. Where is it? Uh, ah, here. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Galbraith. Yes? Yes, I have a message for you, sir. Mr. Evans is waiting for you in the reception lounge. Thank you. It's your passport, sir. Uh, I hope you've had a pleasant holiday. I have. It's, it's through there, sir. Oh, come on. You've come home at last. You're a very persistent man, Tommy. And you are a very elusive friend. What the hell were you doing in Oslo? I wasn't doing in Oslo. I was doing in Kristiansand. I was fishing. Mm. You still take it seriously? (laughs) I take it that your meeting me here is not just out of friendship. Everything I do is out of friendship, Bill. But I've been looking for you for four days. I've been keeping out of your way. I know. That's why I came here. I need your help. No, Tommy. Look, I have a car waiting, a comfortable ride into town. Let's have dinner together. At least you can listen. (laughs) Well, how was that? The one thing I'll say for you, Tommy Evans, you always provide a good dinner. And the other thing you'll say? Your charm won't work. The last time you stood me dinner, it took me halfway across Europe and nearly got me killed. So long as you listen to me, that's all I ask. Oh, will we have coffee and brandy now or finish the wine? We'll finish the wine. Ah, Good dinner, a good claret, a quiet table. We can talk. About what? A photograph. A happy photograph taken on a holiday outing. Eight smiling men, three pretty girls. You know them, of course. It was taken some time ago, wasn't it? Uh, Four or five years ago? Mm, Could be, by the look of the girls. And the men. (laughs) A villain's day out. South End? Oh, it might be a little posher than that, Bill. It shows a well-kept velvet lawn, the sun glinting on the distant sea. Ah, A summer's day, for sure. A happy group around a table on the lawn, but nothing to say whether it's the lawn of a big house or an hotel. Hmm, Sure you could find out if required? What is it you want to know? The men in the photo. Villains. But I don't recognize all of them. If they are, they said you never forgot a face. That's still true, Tom. But I never met all of this happy band. I wonder what they were being so happy about. Two of the men have crayon circles around their heads. Do you know them? No. But you know the others? I'm not likely to forget them. But all of them have now retired from the rough and tumble of their trade. (laughs) It wasn't the retirement party. No. Well, this one has now retired to the south of France to enjoy his hard-earned loot. This one has bought a little Greek island and lives under heavy protection. This one used his ill-gotten gains to buy an expensive gaming club in Mayfair. 
He considers himself respectable now, and so do his shareholders. Uh, these two were not so lucky. One retired to that big hold-up in the sky. He was murdered. How's that? Very good. Do you know the three women? I know two of them, that one and that one. And the one with the crayon circle round her head, I don't know. Why should the owner of the photo put a circle around the head of that woman and two of the men? Well, because he was like me. He knew all the others. He puts a circle around the heads of the ones he doesn't know, trying to trace or identify them. And so am I, Bill, trying to identify them. Why? But when we finished our coffee, come back to my office. I'll show you why. If I had any sense, I'd be on my way home. You'll be glad you came? You were once my commander, Tom Evans, but I resigned from the yard to enjoy my life. To go fishing, it was a waste. I don't want ever again to stand on drafty corners waiting for villains to turn up. These villains are now very rich. I don't care what they are. I mean, I only want your opinion. <laughs> It'll just take a couple of minutes. Let there be light. That's more like it. Come in, Bill. Your office still looks lush. Well, you can have one just like it. Never. Now, what is it you want to show me? Well, just be patient, boy. Exhibit number one. Mm -hmm. A packet. Now, a week ago, mm -hmm. this packet was still unopened and remained unopened, being held as security by a lady. The owner failed to return. Now, she was an honest landlady who couldn't bring herself to open personal property. She saw a name and address scribbled on the back of the pocket and took it there. You recognize the name? Could I forget? If I had a pound for every time I've locked horns with him. The best criminal lawyer in the East End, Bernard Finch. Well, it's no surprise his name was on it. He's defended every villain in that photograph. He opened it and sent the lady to me. Do you know what was in the pocket? What? These bonds, bearer bonds, stolen bearer bonds, to the value of a quarter of a million pounds, and this inventory of jewellery. A very precise inventory which suggests even to me a value of at least three quarters of a million. Well, it's all yeah. top quality stuff. Mm. The third item, a letter addressed to the owner of the pocket which in any language offers a threat to his life. Saying, amongst other things, let sleeping dogs lie, settle for silence, or you will be silenced. It's addressed to Paul, a lad called Paul Carson. You can read it later. Mm. Now, the fourth item in the packet was the photograph I showed you. She took it to the address scribbled on the envelope. Bernard took one look at the men in the photo and sent her to me. Now, why should he do that? Well, because Bernard and I are old friends and because he's out of it all now. About six months ago, he had a heart attack. He sold his practice, left the East End villains to their own devices. Lives quietly now, oh. in a house in Highgate. But put all that aside, and think of the man who had in his possession this quarter of a million in bearer bonds, and who was being warned to settle for silence or be silenced. I think he was silenced. I want to know who he was. The landlady will know. She doesn't. He's one of the unknown men in the photograph. No. It's time I was home, Tommy. This morning I was fishing happily in Norway. It's been a long day. Oh, there was one last item. Hmm? Uh, left behind by the young man who went out one evening in search of his quarry and didn't return. This. It's a bit unusual these days, Tom. A monogram cigarette case. Gold. Solid gold. The monogram on the outside, J.M. And on the inside, inscribed to Jackie M. So it wasn't the property of your friend Paul Carson? He had it, and he was looking for someone. Inscribed on the inside, to Jackie M for courage beyond the call of duty. A good friend, September the 7th. It doesn't give the year, but the engraving is fresh. Courage beyond the call of duty. I mean, we haven't had a war for years. I think it was something criminal, something to do with that photo. Jackie M. Does it mean anything to you? 
What's your interest in this, Tommy? My interest is in the lad whose life was threatened. A lad who marked three people in that photograph and who left a million pounds behind suddenly. And in this act of friendship that went beyond the call of duty? Well, the pocket came to me while you were away, Bill. I had to get Sammy Barbers to him. Well, he's oh. good. He knows everyone in the East End. He's only an informer. What is it you want? That's better. I'd like you to have a talk with Bernard Finch about why he sent this to me. But first, I want you to see the landlady. She lives down in Camberwell, a Mrs. Palmer. Mrs. Palmer. And Bill, while you are down there, mm. if you see Babister, <laughs> he can be useful. You by the gallopers. I'm talking to you, mate. What are you holding? Oh, it's you, Mr. Galbraith. Sorry, I didn't recognise you. It's Nick Tully. That's right, Gaff. Sorry I was shouting like that, but this place is for kids. Orders are to keep the ground up soft, especially men. <laughs> Might be creepers. I'll remember. Yeah, what brings you down this way? Looking for Sammy Babister. Can we get out of this noise? Sure, yeah. Come into the caravan. Oh, you've made it cosy in here. Yeah, yeah. They said you was left the full scaff. Wasn't true then? Oh, it's true. Yeah, what brings you then? Oh, this and that. What about you? Well, the fairground, Lark. Uh, belongs to the council. It's for the kids south of the river. I tore it around whenever there's a spare bit of ground. Oh. A small vacant piece like this, we just have uh, swings and gallopers. Mm. Bigger piece, and I give them sideshows as well. You know, hoopla, uh, rollerball. Uh, and on Saturdays, we have Punch and Judy. Oh, yeah. You like it? That's a living. How big is your parish? The two are uh, all around the South Bank. Uh, Lambeth, Camberwell, Kennington, uh, Southwark, down the river to Rotherhide. Maybe there's a vacant piece of ground and kids in the street. Well, you could be useful to me, Nick, for moving around like that. Yeah, I'm still what brought you. You still work with the mob? Nah. Garrett and Tim Dace? Ah, they've gone now, Gaff. One a year ago, you should know that. Yes. A Hogan? Yeah, that was different, wasn't it? They've asked to in life for that. Was it because of Garrett? Was it the same thing? Yeah, there was someone else asking that question. A lad named Carson. Have you seen him lately? No. Well, what did you know about him? Not a thing. Want me to keep my ears open? It would be worth your while. OK. <laughs> you know how to find me. Just listen for the roundabouts. Mrs. Palmer? Yes? I've come from Mr. Evans. My name's Galbraith. From Mr. Evans? I think you know him. Come in, please. It's a bit dark, sir. But not to worry. Just follow me to the end of the passage. Here we are, then. I'm afraid it's not very tidy, sir. I wasn't expecting... Ah, it's quite all right, Mrs Palmer. It's kind of you to see me. Oh, I'm always pleased to see a friend of Mr Evans's. Such a kind man. It's about the envelope, isn't it? About the man who left it with you? Oh, Mr Carson. Oh, well, I don't know much about him, sir. You see, he mostly kept himself to himself while he was here. He was having a difficult time, I think. Paul Carson? That was the name he gave me. Uh, can you describe him? He was young... Sort of uh, medium height, good looking. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not being very helpful. <laughs> the world's full of good looking young men of medium height. Uh, try his age 28, 30, about that. He didn't tell me. Has something happened to him? How did you come to meet him? Well, he'd come to ask if a Mr. Denning was staying here or had ever stayed here. Uh -huh. He seemed to think he had. Well, I could see he was a well-bred young man, educated, so I invited him in. Mm -hmm. Well, the end of it was, he asked if he could have a room while he made inquiries in the district. Uh, did he say anything about this, Mr Denning? No. Talked as though he didn't know him, but was searching for him. Did he find him? Don't know, sir. 
how did he come to leave the package? The envelope? Yes. Well, when he fell behind with the rent, he was always expecting his lap to turn, you see, waiting for the ship to come home, he said. Well, when it come home, he'd be well off again and pay all his debts. <laughs> did he pay all his debts? Not to me, he never. Ah. How long did he stay with you? About six months. Well, then I had to tell him that people like me had no ships coming home. I mean, I have to live on my rents. I was sorry about it, but you have to be fair. Well, it was a Friday night and I told him no rent, no room. He went upstairs and come back with the envelope. Said he was going out that evening to meet a man who knew where this Mr Denning was. Uh -huh. He insisted that I kept the envelope until he come back to pay me. He didn't come back, Mrs Palmer? No, sir. Mr Evans? Yes? Mr Bavister to see you. Oh, show him in. Oh, come in, Sam. What have you heard? A few odd snatches, Mr Evans. It's coming along nicely. Now, let me be the judge, Sam. Now, the inventory of jewellery. I've been through every stolen list for the last five years, but none of the pieces are on any list I can find, and none of it has been on offer, so far as I can hear. It's good stuff. I could put out feelers to see if anyone knows who they were made for. Yes... Yes, do that. Do you want me to go back more than five years? No, I think five is enough. No, uh, the young man who had the inventory. Carson. Oh, now this is an horse of a different colour. What I've traced about him is quite clear. He did have digs for a time with that lady, Mrs Palmer. All the time he was looking for a man named Denning. Uh, did you know this man, Denning? No. Nah. Did he find him? <laughs> it looks like it. He was last seen one Friday night. It could be the Friday night you told me about. He was waiting in a pub in Rotherhive, hanging round for someone to turn up. He waited about an hour, and just before ten o'clock, or so they say, a man came in. Carson finished his drink, and they went out together. Was it Denning? Well, those who knew Denning say no. This man looked like a sailor. They were seen again later that evening walking towards the river. The nearest I can time it, about 11 o'clock that night. He didn't return to any of the pubs, didn't return to his digs. <laughs> he wasn't seen again. Have you, have you a friend's any thoughts on this? Oh, they say he was asking awkward questions and wouldn't go away. So, like the man he was searching for, he vanished, didn't he? When Mr Carson didn't return that night, what did you think, Mrs Palmer? Well, I thought he'd taken the hint about the rent. Because next day a man came asking if he'd left anything behind. Came next day? In the morning. Well, I said Mr Carson had brought nothing, so there was nothing to leave. And what was he like? The man? Well, he had a sort of foreign accent. He looked like a sailor. He tried to frighten me, but I got angry with him and he went away. He didn't know that the envelope had been left with you? I didn't tell him. Ah. I put it in that drawer in case Mr Carson did come back. When he paid his rent, he could have it. Well, then it went out of my mind. I oh, didn't even think about it again. Uh -huh. Then last week I was looking for something. There was a lawyer's name on it, so I wasn't for opening it. There was a photograph in it. Uh, Mr Evans asked me questions about that. Mr Carson wasn't in the photo. No. Did you know any of the people in it? Criminals, Mr Galbraith. Do you know any criminals? Oh, when you're born and brought up in a district like this, you can't help knowing some criminals. But some of us try to lead respectable lives. I have the photograph here. Uh, will you help me? Of course. Do you know any of the women? Oh, I know all three of them. This one's Betty Garrett. Uh -huh. She married that one at the table, John Garrett. They say he has lots of money now. Lives in the Mediterranean. Big house and all her orders. A villa. Do you know how he got all that money? Dishonest, I shouldn't wonder. Now, this one here is Daisy Hart. Mm -hmm. She married that one, David Hart. She weren't so lucky. Her husband's in prison. He's in prison for life, for murder. Oh, he killed the one who's sitting next to him in the picture. His best friend. Did you hear why he killed him? 
When you mind your own business, you don't never hear them things. Uh, the third woman, the one with the circle round her head. Oh, that's Rita Thomas. Oh, I knew her when she was just a kid in this street. Pretty, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Full of life. She was always the pretty one. Do you know where she lives? Wait a minute. Uh, she married. Now, what was his name? Well, it'll come in a minute. I know it will. Well, does she still live around here? I don't know, but I could ask. Will you do that for me? Of course. And when you remember the name and know where she lives, phone me and I'll come back and see you again. Mm, I like having visitors. Mr Galbraith? Uh, yes? In the envelope, there was a gold case. He did owe me rent. Mr Evans will look after you. You won't be out of pocket. Goodbye, Mrs Palmer. Finished for the night? Yeah, just packing in. It's Nick Tully, isn't it? Who are you? Don't you remember? It's the sailor. That's right. Now, you had a visit from a cop today. Uh, look, mate, I'm just closing down. I've got work to do. What did he want? Ah, just being nosy. What was I doing? Was I keeping out of trouble? That, my friend, is not true. What do you mean? It was Galbraith. He isn't in the force now. He doesn't give a damn who keeps out of trouble. He was asking questions. No, he just can't... Oh. Oh. What was that for? Galbraith came to see you, and then he went to a house in Camberwell to see an old lady. I know nothing about no house in Camberwell. What questions did he ask? I didn't give him any answers. I have answers. You know that. Good. The doc wants you to keep it like that. Yeah, sure. Oh, and Tully. Yeah. You are easy to find. Remember that. Bernard Finch. Good evening, Bernie. Ah, uh, it's Galbraith, isn't it? I thought you'd call. I'd like to see you. When? Now. At this time of night. Uh, all right, I'll be waiting for you. Come in, Bill. What's so urgent at this time of night? Uh, some questions. I didn't hear about your trouble, Bernie. I didn't broadcast it. Sold the practice and slipped away. I was in hospital at the time, intensive care. I nearly did slip away. <laughs> you're indestructible. Well, I hope you're right. Did you drive here? I'll come back cab. Ah, then we can have a drink together. Brandy? Thank you. It's a nice place to retire to. Bought with fat fees out of crime. Is that what you're saying? I didn't say a word. Oh, it's quiet, Bill. That's what the quacks say I must have now, quiet. Away from the fights and the tensions. Away from the courts. No more trials? Ah, that's what they say. You were a formidable defence lawyer. Ah, Sounds like an epitaph. <laughs> I wasn't meant to be. Your drink. The crime. Cheers. You, uh, you said questions. Uh, tell me, Bernie, why did you, a criminal lawyer, a famous defence lawyer, send that envelope to an ex-commander from Scotland Yard? To Tommy. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know? Yes. First, because he is an ex-commander. He runs a private bureau now, international. Secondly, because he's the only ex-detective I would trust. There has to be a detective you can trust. You can judge that for yourself. Uh, Tom Evans thinks he has a personal interest in that packet. I know he has. Tell me. We'll start with the photograph I sent him. Some men and women are having a pleasant time at the seaside. Uh -huh. uh, six of the men were your clients. Of course. Our courts say that everyone is entitled to the best defence under law. Mm -hmm. I could provide it, but this is different. The crime that package tells of has not yet been discovered. 
Hmm. The photo was taken about uh, four years ago. Uh, we hmm. could both guess at that. Add together the criminal expertise of the men in that photo, and what do you have? I'd say I have a crime being planned. You could say you had a big crime being planned. A crime that took a long time to prepare. Two of the men have little circles around their heads. Yeah, well, you can bet they weren't meant to be halos. <laughs> do you know them? No. And that's what worries me. Three of the others have become very rich. A fourth was murdered, and a fifth is doing life for it. Hogan was murdered by Dave Hart. You defended Dave Hart, Barney. What was the truth of it? Oh, that was a year ago. The prosecution played find the lady, claimed that Hogan was having an affair with Daisy Hart. Was he? No, but that's how it looked, and it puzzled me. Then why did Dave Hart kill his best friend? I only prepared his defence bill. He didn't offer a confession, and I didn't demand one. In fact, he offered nothing, which was out of character. Hmm. That happened a year ago, so the job took three years to prepare. Now, what kind of job? I'm not quite sure, but it worries me. Something that led to big gains. A crime that has not yet been discovered and certainly has not yet been reported. It was the letter in that package, the threat to the young man Carson, that started my suspicions. It was then that unrelated incidents began to fall into place. The fact that the young man has now disappeared gives me a feeling of fear. Do you mean that you are in danger? Or that your special knowledge of these men... I might... don't know, Bill. I really don't know. You've had many criminal clients, Bernie. Did you recognise the handwriting? No, but I made a copy of the letter. What do you think of it? Well, let's see it. There's no envelope. No, just the letter with the bonds and the inventory. Paul, if you won't take a hint, it's time you were given some advice. Keep what you have and ask no more questions. That way, no one will bother you. The men you are looking for... Men? I copied it accurately. It said men. The men you are looking for are not easily found. They don't want to be found. Let sleeping dogs lie. And whatever you may have heard, settle for silence or you will be silenced. A word to the wise. Signed with a J. An elegant cursive J. Any thoughts? Told to keep Bondsworth quarter of a million and no one bother him. Bill. I think they opened a Pandora's box and they let something out, something they can't cope with. Something that has led to at least one murder. Hmm. Hmm. Here's why I handed it over to Tom Evans. I'm not well. The doctors say I must have quiet, Bill. No involvement and no excitement. And it's getting late. Let's talk some other time. Of course. But if you learn something about these men, you'll come back. I'll be back. Uh, oh, uh, wait a minute, Bill. It might be for you. Oh. Finch speaking. Mr. Bernard Finch? Yeah. You have Galbraith with you? Yeah. Do you want him? Listen. You have seen a letter that gives advice. It is good advice. Your friends don't want to be found. Who is that? Stay out of this, Mr. Finch. Or you will be silenced. That was episode one of Galbraith and the Midas Touch with Bernard Hepton in the name part. Richard Davis plays the part of Tom Evans, with Garrard Green as Bernie Finch. Nick Tully is played by Clive Bereson, the informer Bavister by Eric